everybody. Oh, welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. How you doing, dude? I'm good. I'm a little tired. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you look a little wrecked. Yeah, it's uh, birthday was on Sunday. Um, I've kind of just been on a two day bender. Um, so yeah, I'm like I'm here, but like not. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm here. I'm present. I am. I am. I am here for the podcast, but my brain's a little fried. Okay, I'm well, not gonna lie. Then let me get to the business real quick. Uh, first of all, Dallas, what an amazing weekend we had with you guys. Uh, we obviously went to Terry Black's. I got a new lid, best barbecue in the country. Stop fucking around with other barbecues. If you're in Austin or Dallas and just go to Terry Black's. It's what, so good. What are we doing? It's so good that on Saturday I brought our leftover beef ribs back to the hotel and then put them in the fridge and Sunday morning, put them in my carry on bag and flew back to Vegas. With them. Dude had TSA check in his pork rib, his beef ribs. All right. So like, yeah, TSA unwrapped my ribs. That sounds yeah. dirty, but it's not. But like, yeah, yeah, they, dude, full on took it out of my bag, unwrapped it. And he went, he was like, where'd you get it from? I was like, Terry Black. He goes, good move. And then another random TSA woman was like, did you just come here for barbecue? And I was like, well, no, we were here for work, but. What a know. stupid fucking question that was. Because guess what? Yeah, I, I flew I, to Dallas so I could go to a restaurant. You dumb dumb. I mean. Terry Black's is worth flying to a place to go get. Come on, man. There's no place that's worth flying to a place to go get. Not unless you got private jet money. I'm Fair not enough. buying a fucking ticket. Well, I mean, like, we'd go to Dallas and, like, be there for a day or two. Yeah. But I'd be going just pretty much for Terry Black's. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then she looks at me and she goes, go to, go to, go to, tennis, go to Tennessee with that shit. And I was like, that's stupid. I was like, ma'am. And she just walked away. And I went, ma'am, that didn't even make any sense. That's stupid. And then the guy unwrapping my ribs politely wraps them back up and goes, don't listen to her. She says the dumbest things every day. Yeah, Tennessee like, yeah. is, by the way, we're going to Nashville this weekend. Yep. Huge shows, huge guests this weekend. Friday's going to be a monumental mushroom show. Good Lord. But don't go to Tennessee for the barbecue, everybody. You're going to be sorely disappointed. That is not your spot yep. for the barbecue. I'd go for some hot chicken. Oh, yeah. But I'm not going for definitely. any BB, 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 BBQ. Nope. Definitely getting some Hattie B's though while we're out there. For sure. Overrated. <laughs> Overrated. It's pretty good. I like Dave's more. Dave's hot chicken? Yeah. Not crunchy enough. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'll fuck with some Dave's. I'm not saying it's bad. It's good, but Dave's hot chicken. Hattie B's, if you like the crispiness of the chicken, Hattie B's is white crispy. I'm going to tell you something right now. The Dave's hot chicken in Henderson. Dave's Hot Chicken in Henderson? Dude, the Dave's Hot Chicken in Henderson down maybe Green Valley, maybe down there is fire. I, I love Dave's Hot Chicken. I'll go like, over there with you. There, but I don't think thought, thought there was that one on the strip. There's one over there too. I didn't know there was one in Henderson. Anyways, Nashville this weekend. Guys, um, uh, every Monday night show in Vegas is cooking. Uh, the live shows are fucking... Next level. Jacob Wolf is becoming a legit uh, comic. I have to tell you something right now, guys. Uh, and you know, I'm I'm not a dude who's I'm not a braggadocious dude, or I'm just telling you how I feel. I can tell you right now, I feel like I've never felt on stage. I feel like all like so good. All the wheels are on the tracks. Um, it's just a good time, man. It, the the shows are a legit good time. So come out, come out wherever you are, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Thank you all so much for the new listeners and the old listeners on this podcast. We have some crazy guests coming up. Um, we, uh, we're going to be interviewing Bunny, uh, Carolyn Bryan, uh, Karen Fairchild uh, from Little Big Town right. when we're in Nashville. And then we're setting up, uh, we did, guys, we did Wiz's podcast. I did Wiz's podcast last week. Wiz Khalifa's, it was such a good fucking time. Yeah, it was fun. I was so Super stony baloney. Uh, but I can't wait for you guys to hear that too. And with that, yo, dude, you had a great birthday. I had a great birthday, man. It was uh it started with that early flight, but then we got back and uh my lovely girlfriend Iman and my one of my best friends, Rich, uh, were at the house when I got there. We went and got brunch. Um I got drunk. That was fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did Hell's Kitchen at night and we went and did a little gambling. I was really hoping St. Patrick's Day birthday would bring me a little luck on it the did. It brought you luck. You won a thousand dollars on a spin. Twelve Hondo. I won nothing. I honestly It was quick. Can I tell you? So your mom and I, we walked into the high limit rope, right? Mm. Cause I was like, I'm gonna win some money. 
And I, by the way, that day in the airport, I had hit on the third spin, I had won 180 bucks, 108 bucks. Um, and then I sit down, uh, you guys are on whatever, some slots. And I told your mom, I go, let's go high limits. And I put some money in and it was $25 a spin, right? There was a hundred dollars spin, but I was like, I'm just going to do $25 spin. Right. I hit on the first spin on one machine and I cashed out. What'd you hit? I hit like 350 bucks. Okay. And then I went just to the machine next to it. No, no, no. Then your mom and I left, walked around for a little bit. I go, let's go back to the high limits. We walk back. I picked the machine next to it. I put the ticket in that I had won the money on mm. and it, it doubled. I won 500 and no, I won like 650. All right. So I, I won like over a grand yeah. on two spins and just walked the fuck out. I didn't try to double up. I didn't because I, you know what? Here's my goal. Here's my thing with gambling. With my thing with gambling is I'm not betting enough up front to hit. I'm not Taylor Lewan. I'm not going in there. You know, the, the new way of thinking is, well, not new way. Uh, if I want to win $10,000, I bet $10,000. Right. And if I lose it, I bet 20. Or I bet whatever it is so I can make that 10 and eventually I win a hand on right. blackjack and I win. Right. Okay? My thing is, I'm, I'm still too much of a tight butthole to do that. Be, but, but, so I don't need, I'm not going to bet enough up front to make enough money mm. to where I'm jumping around. Right. But if I keep track of it over the years, because when I win a hundred bucks, when I win 200 bucks, when I win 300 bucks, I just take it mm. and I'm up, you know, I'm up. Oh yeah. I'm up because I don't just, I don't double down with it. You know who's not? Yeah, dude. Your boy's down. Yeah. I'm on a cold streak right now. I'm not going to lie. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I just got like legit 10 text messages from me. Anyway, um, I apologize. Yeah, it's all right. But, but yeah, yeah. I, I am. I am down. I am down. I am down for sure. Yeah, dude, I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, for sure. I mean, and I loved that. We had a great time. Uh, we had a great time at dinner with you guys and what a great weekend. And tell me what you want to talk about today. I have some things I want to talk about, but we'll leave that towards the end. Um, tell me what you want to talk about today. Um, yeah, we, we have some, we have some, uh, I definitely have a video that I would like to show you. Let's first, hit it. First and foremost, uh, this popped up on my Instagram feed yesterday i think or two days ago and it yeah you know what we're just gonna watch it then we'll talk about it okay drank water for years now each day i'm consuming about a half gallon of fresh urine smells like buttery popcorn first of all i want to put a hard protest down for the term fresh urine yeah i don't care if it's fresh if it's day old frozen refrigerated, organic, grass-fed urine. You, yo, I want to tell you what urine is. Urine is toxins being pissed out of your, why don't you eat your poop too, you quitters? Yeah. <laughs> here's all I'm saying is, here's, here's my general rule. Here's my general rule. Right? Ready? Once my body gets rid of something, I'm not taking it back. No. Be, because it got rid of it for a second. You, let's think about it. I'm not licking sweat. I'm not eating poop. I'm not drinking Europe. Uh, Europe. Yeah. I'm not drinking urine. I'm not. I'm not spooning vomit, and I'm not recirculating my semen. Anything that comes out of my body comes out for a reason. You can do what you want with it, but I got rid of it. My body got rid of it for a reason. Yeah. Now, if I'm stuck on a mountain and I need some liquid, I'm drinking my urine. Right? Yeah, but it's only gonna you know doing that even in survival mode is gonna make you more thirsty and more sick. Show, sure, dude. I would tell you something else. I, I look. I don't know how old these people are. This dude here, but I, I mean, I, I don't know that he looks like he doesn't look unhealthy to me. But I don't know how old he is. I don't know how much he's how much urine he's been drinking. And I don't. I don't. Here's another thing I don't understand. How do you get enough urine if all you're drinking is urine? Right, because water makes the urine. And right, you, well, I mean, it's a liquid, so I mean, it, it, like yeah, water makes some of it gets absorbed. Right, but I mean, if the, again, if this is all stuff that is going to be expelled from the body, 
maybe the body is just like knows exactly where to put it back. Here's the thing. I'm not buying into it. I think it's fake unless you're eating your shit too. Unless that is what you're saying. Because what you're saying is my body is providing me with these nutrients <clears throat> from expelling it. So it wouldn't the same thing be true with your dookies? Just freeze them. So they're, you know what I mean? I mean, I guess like that, that they're that, MREs. They're MREs. <laughs> I mean, we could ask Tre- we could we could ask Trevor. I bet you the MREs tasted like shit, anyways. And I've had some MREs; they taste like doo doo. But listen, at least we know if he's if he's being honest and he's eating healthy, his doo doo should be healthy. Will you will you play one more time for us, Matt? Right here from the top, because we saw it halfway through. I want to see it right here from the top. Okay. My name is Nick. Cheers. My name is Aubrey. I mean, they look healthy. Wait, we pause it real we quick, are Matt. Addicted to drinking our urine. This is my question. First of all. When it, when you saw them like sitting on the dock, like I, can I be honest? When I first saw this, I thought it was moonshine. That's what like because it's in the mason jar. Yeah, but also question: Why is hers clear and why is his dark? Well, this is what I'm saying. She must be drinking other liquids. For your urine to be clear like that, you have to be drinking other liquids. 100. percent He. I want to. I here's another thing that I want to know. How did they meet? Did they meet on urinedrinkers.com? Is that like farmers only? I was going to say. I mean, is there just a community? Because I imagine you're, when you Tinder, is it right you're interested? No. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. It's one of those. It's, uh, well, I know it's one of them, dude. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, I think it's right. Uh, so are you like, do you put this in your Tinder profile? Must drink urine or... I mean, look, if I was looking for someone who was also a fan of drinking urine, I would definitely put it in my profile. Because here's the thing. I can almost guarantee you from a guy coming from a guy who doesn't like to drink his own urine. How do you know? What do you mean? How Have you ever tasted your own urine? Have you? This is not what I asked. You, you're the one who said, I don't like drinking my own urine. So I'm just curious. If you've ever... No. Have you ever accidentally tasted nope. urine? You've never accidentally tasted urine? No. Nope. Well, I've accidentally tasted urine, but I've and not from a glass. Uh, Don't worry about it. Did you pay for it? I, I didn't pay for it, no. Okay. Yeah. But, Anywho. But it, yeah, it was... Yeah. It, you know, my, my thing is like, I'm, I'm going to try everything one time. Most things. I'm going to try just to see what the deal is. So I'm going to tell you right now, urine is not... There's no... I don't, there's, it doesn't taste like butter. That's no, or does it smell like buttery popcorn? No, that is the that most is. foul comparison I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm going to tell you something else. A hundred percent chance. If I was a urine drinker, I'm putting it on my, if I'm trying to date, I'm putting it on my profile. No, that's what I'm saying. hundred percent. Cause again, I am going to say, I don't like drinking my own urine cause I've never tried it. Never will. Nor will I taste urine. Period. So what you're saying is you don't think that you would like the taste. Of I know I wouldn't like. I'm okay. It. You don't think. Did you like it? No, but I, I. Great, great. That's where that conversation ends. If I know I look, if you didn't like it, I know I'm not gonna like it. Okay. But like, if I was on a dating app and I saw a girl that said likes to drink my own urine, I'd be like, block, reported. I'm calling the police. Like, find this woman and put her in jail. Like, I would absolutely not. I have to say that I think it's smart to, if you have something like this that you know is probably a deal breaker for other people, uh-huh. I would put it right at, right, especially if this is all you're drinking, you need to be up front with somebody. If you're out to dinner yeah. with them and you take out like a catheter and you squeeze it into your drink or you bring a mason jar of yellow fluid. Imagine being on a first date and you're like uh, ordering drinks and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll grab like a glass of wine and she's like, oh, no, uh, uh, I'll just have water for now and then they don't have, like they bring out water but she just like pours it out and pulls out her own water bottle of just a mysteriously colored liquid and pours it into her wine glass. Fuck you. I- like, I would lose, I would, I'd be like, there's no possible way I'm witnessing what I'm looking at right now. I would tell you that it's smart. I wish people were more upfront. Like it would have been now. It doesn't matter to me now. But when you're dating, how much better just to get all right? First date. Here's my weird shit. Can you vibe with it or no? That that's what you should do though. Like I, I, the urine thing. Because here's the deal. 
honestly, you put I drink urine at the top of your Tinder profile, you are going to not have to guess on that first date. A hundred percent. Because that person also is into drinking urine. Well, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. And you have matched up. This is what I've always said to people when they're like, I can't find the right person. I can't. It's, it's easier than ever. If you're willing to be honest, yeah, put it online. I like to date a, Italian one-legged midgets. Do you know what? If you put that out there, you're going to get, I don't know how many there are, Yeah, but they're going to find you. Yeah. Oh, 100%. All, all six of them. The algorithm. All six of them. I mean, I don't know how many one-legged Italian midgets there are, but. I feel like that would only be three of them. If you put that at. Why? Each of them have one leg plus they're half the size of a person. So two of them equals one. Wow. Racist. That is not. <laughs> I don't think that's the right term. I'm just saying. It seems. It, it, back. Look. Back in my day. When you had to. Back in my day. You when, whippersnapper. When you had to leave your house to meet humans. It was harder face to face to be completely honest. You couldn't be at a bar and be like, what can I get you? Margarita? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, I drink my own urine. You still good? Like that is too much. But online, where you never have to see somebody again, and you're really just trying to find the per... I don't understand the idea of lying or gaslighting, because that person you're pretending to be has to show up at the date. Yeah. So why not just be like, look, this is what I like. I like a pinky, not a ring finger in my butthole. If you got... You know what I mean? Like, you want to be as specific as you can. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, this, I, like, I like Italian food. I like a pinky in my butthole. I like Star Wars. And I, and, I, and I like to put on a red wig when I have sex. Whatever it is. Okay? You say these things yeah. up front. Yeah. And you're going to be like, bing. Somebody's going to be like, yeah, that's not for me. But somebody's going to be like, fucking, I only have a pinky and a thumb. My other three fingers got lost. So this is exactly perfect for me. Yeah. Or whatever it is. It just doesn't make sense to me that you would... At this point, lie. There's no reason because you're not meeting them in person. And 100, percent there's somebody out there for everybody, just yes. like with the weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> Look, what we're. How did so, they meet? I'm so curious. Who out of the two of them, who was brave enough to say first? I gotta tell you something. I drink urine. I think. And I think him. I, I I, I'm going off of him simply based off of the color of their urine when they're drinking. it. You think he's been drinking urine for longer? He's been drinking urine for longer. Uh -huh. Or she said, yeah, I might kind of be in for that. And it's kind of like maybe faking herself along for a little longer. I don't know. She Well, not faking. She's definitely just said her pee smelled like buttery popcorn. She has taken acid and drank urine at Burning Man before is the vibe I got from her. Yeah. 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 It's like the definition of hippies. Like, now, I guarantee you, if she lifted her underarm, I could braid that armpit hair. I, I might drink acid urine. No, why not? Why are you? Why are you even contemplating drinking any kind of urine? Well, I'm not. But you are. I would. You just did. I wonder if you get sicker from drinking other people's urine as you would from drinking your own. Probably, I would think so. Yeah, if you're drinking your own urine, yeah, it's stuff that's being expelled from your body, but it's your body. Yeah, stuff that's already been in your body. It's your toxins. Putting them back in, it's just, you know, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing, but it's like it, your body can recognize it. If you're putting someone else's germs or contaminated bacteria inside your body, your body's going to react differently and probably go into fight or flight. What's the one thing, and I can tell you for me what it would be, what's the one thing, like, for me, I, if I was on a dating site, I would have to have in my bio, just so you know going in, this is the deal. So I know what I would put in my bio. Here's two things. Going in, you would have to know about me for this to work. Yeah. I, I'm, I'd be like, my name's Josh. Uh, I do drugs and I don't take things too serious. These are the two, th these are the things, like right now, those are the things that I would need you to know right off the bat. I'm going to be high a lot. Yep. Not just on weed. I'm going to take some mushrooms. I like to be altered. I'm going to do drugs and I'm going to make fun of you and not take things too seriously. And so if these are things that you can't get past, I am not the person for you. Everything else I think probably is negotiable. Right, right. What are the things that you would say would be yours? The drugs is definitely one of mine as well. 
just because like I've been in relationships where that significant other has made me stop smoking weed yeah, or in order to be in that relationship. Uh, can I just stop real quick? Yes. Nobody makes you do anything. It was the, it was, I was given an ultimatum. Yep. And I chose to, yes. yes. And well, I would say this to everybody. I, I hate it when people say he made me mad. He makes me sad. He, she makes me angry. Nobody makes you anything. This is a decision that you all make, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I will say, like I said, I made that decision, but didn't stop smoking weed. Right. Um, so, so yeah, I think doing drugs would be on the front also. And, um, I don't know. I think I just, the fact that I'm just to kind of go with the flow, like I'm cool with whatever's going to be happening. You can either want to go out or stay at home. Yeah. I will be fine with whatever that is. I think my, my, my close third would be the same thing as I'm going to make fun of you, but, but don't worry. If I make fun of you, it means I like you. If yeah. I don't make fun of you, you should be worried. Yeah. Kind of shit. I would agree. I, I, I um, I find, uh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you this. That Friday night late show, Mushroom Show in Dallas, mm -hmm. I, I said, I, I can't wait to put the clip out, but I said what, what I think might have been my favorite thing I've ever said to an audience member ever. What'd you say? And it might not have been that nice, but it was right in the moment. And guys, when I take mushrooms, I have zero filter. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. So whatever I think on stage is going to happen. Remember when we were doing the Q and A? Do I want to say it? Let's just say it, and then you can see the clip. And some of you are gonna be like, "This what a dick," because it was on the dick spectrum, but it also wasn't. They were so that so that Friday night late show. We were in the crowd asking questions, and somebody asked uh, a sexual question. A girl, seven and, of them did, and her voice was like that, and and she was like, hey, "Do you guys if you've ever?" At something about us being in the same room having sex. I'm like, no, we don't. That's not. But one, we're both in relationships. Uh -huh. But two, even if we weren't, we're not fucking next to each other. This is not a situation, no. right? And so she goes, okay, fine, fine. Let me ask another question. Where's the weirdest place with the, the you've the sex with the weirdest place that sex? And she was trying to ask, where's the weirdest place you have sex? But she was drunk, and her voice was very. Uh, <laughs> Uh, right? Yeah. And do you remember what I said to her? I go. Yes. I had something along the lines of. Guy, and so guys, I'm not going to be able to repeat this in the moment, but it was so much fun. I go, oh, I understand what you're saying. And let me, let me stop you right there because I, I don't want to hear your voice anymore. Yeah. It was the most honest thing that has come out of my mouth. Cause I was on, I really just the sound of her voice was grating so much. I was like, let me stop you right there because I don't want to hear your voice anymore, but I'll answer your question. Did you see what I did after that? No. I hid behind the curtain. Oh, were you laughing? There was a state, the, the, the curtains on the back wall. I literally just went and it hid behind the curtain. Her boyfriend was laughing so, so hard. Fucking hard, dude. She was laughing. She was slipping me off, but she was laughing yeah, as yeah, she yeah. was doing it. But um, what a great fucking, I had so much fun in Dallas. It was, yeah. it was amazing. It was but, good time. Um, so, you and by the way, Lee Syatt is with us. This week. I know. Did I mention who we're interviewing in Nashville yet? Yes, I did. Right now, already. You did at the top of the show. I did on the podcast here. Fuck. I'm one with the fried brain, man. You can't ask me to be the stenographer today. It's not going to last very long. Good word. Good word. Um, but but I would tell you, dude. Um, I've I can tell you, it's important to mention. See, for me, deal breakers. This is a deal breaker. Oh, a hundred percent. But it's also important, like, I think, okay. So I remember a date I went on in Seattle. And this is when I was like, I'm never going to pretend again. On dates anyway. Right. I went on a date in Seattle. And the, I went on a date with this girl who, she was one of the Budweiser girls. who used to come into a bar that I owned slash ran. Okay. Wait, Wait, Budweiser girl? What do you mean? Like a... Okay, so, uh, you know, I don't know if they still do it. I don't know because I don't know if it's too politically incorrect or, but girl, if you, maybe I was going to run a Bud special uh, at my bar. And so the Budweiser people will come and they would put up signs and they would maybe give me some cool whatever. Oh, was she and the, the girls dressed in the Budweiser gear would yeah. come around Got and it. ask, right, right. Got it. So, um, and uh, by the way, dude, this, this place that I ran, I want to get into it. In a little bit, but but um, Lobo Loco, Lobo Loco, dude. What the f 
fucking joint that was. I don't remember what I was talking about. Budweiser. Bud, the Budweiser girl. What about her? Oh, I was on a date with her. Yeah. Oh, you were on a date with her. Got it. And um, I was going to this party at this place called the Phoenix Underground. And in the 90s, guys, this, the Phoenix Underground in Seattle was an L.A. club, L.A. vibes, late night. The dude who ran it named Rick was a vampire. You, if you saw him during the day, it was spares. And he, and he was the palest pale you have ever seen. Like, I can see your heart pale. Whoa. Like, you know what I mean? Like, did you come up from the bottom of the ocean? Like, that type of pale. Like, your leg's pale? Yes, but worse. Oh, yeah, it's hard to do. Like my legs, at least look alive. His had a real deathly. Your legs look like they're on their way out. Yep, no doubt. They, yeah. they, they're not great, but not, uh, even, not even close to great. Pretty so great. I go on a date with this girl, and uh, I there's a party that she wants to go to, and we've been talking about, and it was my mistake for telling her about the party. And midway through the dinner, I was thinking to myself, if she comes to the party with me. It's over. It's going to be terrible. Yeah, 100%. It's going to be one of the worst nights. So I, uh, midway through the dinner, and I know people are going to say this is harsh, but is it? Because what would have happened instead is we would have gone and I would have ditched her. You would have ditched her? If we had gone and I hadn't wanted to hang out with her, I'm not going to just hang out with her. Oh, I thought you were saying you were gonna. it was a bad idea to go because she was going to ditch you. No, 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 no. I just was not feeling it. Oh. I just was not feeling it. Got it. So midway through the dinner, uh, she said something about the party. I go, hey, listen, the party's not going to happen. She goes, are you not going to the party? I go, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to the party. I'm going to the party. I go, I just don't think this is. I said, you know, I hope this doesn't ruin a friendship or that we can't, but I understand if it gets, you know, next time you come into the place for the, that you don't yeah. feel like chatting it up but like this isn't it for me and um and and honestly dude i was so looking forward to the party and how bananas it was gonna be i didn't want to not have fun have fun yeah and so it was such a huge conversation with me and a couple of my we called them waitresses at the time but as servers and at, at the next the next day they were like that was one of the girl, women was like that was fucked up you should have just taken her and the other woman was like are you kidding haven't you been led on a million times and thought you had a good time the night before and then the dude just never calls? Yeah. Like, at least he was honest. Yeah. And so it was such a crazy... But but since that moment, and it felt so good, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to pretend anymore to be anybody else because then I got to eventually be myself. Right. In a relationship, you know? Uh, yeah, eventually the truth comes out. I wish I had learned that quicker as an artist. I wish I had stopped early on writing what I because I thought somebody else was going to think it was funny I wish I wish I had taken my own relationship advice and put it into my art a little yeah, sooner absolutely I understand that do you do that right now oh uh just straight up what do you mean like do I do that like just putting the honesty into my work yeah yeah I try to be as authentic as I can on stage always I try to be as authentic as I can authentic as I can everywhere whether whether I'm on camera or not, I'm always trying to just make sure that I am myself 100% of the time because, well, there's only one person with me, truthfully, only one person with me from birth to the end. And that is me. All right. Let me ask you a question. Okay. All right. When at the end of the podcast every week, when you say do something good for somebody, do you, do you feel that every week? Or some week, are you like, I'm, I just, this is what I say, so I'm going to say it. No, I mean that. All right. That's I wouldn't, I, the, there were times, there was a couple months where I stopped saying it. Yeah, I remember. There was a reason for it. I don't know what the reason was, but there was an absolute reason for it. Yeah. You know? And then when someone said it and was like, we miss you saying that. And I was like, I kind of miss saying that too. Yeah. And then I got back into it. And now it's something I don't ever forget to say. Awesome. Okay. All right. Because I do something nice for someone every day and I tell multiple people every day that I love them. So. Uh, all right, I'm going to put one last thing up to you. Okay. And then let's go to the other video that I think I said in. Yes. If, okay, there are three things that science has decided is good for your health. It is the uh, urine drinking. Okay. A poop mask. Okay. Okay, do you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. Where, you know, it pulls all the toxins out that's, of your body. That's pink eye. Waiting to happen. Well, you can put it on your body. 
Okay. So, so drinking urine. Poop mask. Poop mask. Uh, I like the way you said poop mask. You really put an emphasis on that P. Yeah. Poop mask. So if it's between drinking urine, poop mask, or only eating food anally, which one, like you, you're like you put your food in your boot in your booty hole. Like you know, if you put drugs in your booty hole, you get higher, faster. Yeah. Yes. So, and yeah, so yeah. say nutrition was like the doctors were like, look, the mouth is old school, the anus is the where it's at. So you just got to put vitamins in your butthole. You're going to be the healthiest dude in the world. So hit me. Are you going? I'm are going, you I'm going, going? I'm going suppository. You're going anal vitamins, poop mask, urine. Suppository. I'm going. I'm going anal vitamins. Every morning you're getting a Flintstone. Hundred percent. Flintstone gummy up the butt. You got it. Yeah. Not. Not even a question. But all your vitamins, like every, like you got to take anything. Your vitamin C, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah, your your cayenne, lemon pepper, yep, cleanse. Absolutely. Everything through the butthole. 100%. Yeah, I think... I just don't think I could ev ever get over the fact that I'd be drinking my own piss, and there is a 0% chance in any universe ever that I'm putting poop on me. On purpose. On purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever stepped... In poop barefoot? No. The fucking worst feeling ever, dude. Yeah, it probably was like, probably like you stepped in and then it went between your toes. Oh, and like got man. Mushy. I really wanted to cut my foot off when that happened. Did I? Yeah, I told you Adam stepped in my poop barefoot. Well, not barefoot, but he did step in my poop. At least it wasn't barefoot. Yo, dude, I've stepped in human poop. When you step in human poop, there is... How do you know it's human poop? How you can tell by the shape. So huh? Shape size. Can you, though? Yeah. See some pretty big dog poops. Okay. Uh, Indiana Jones. Dude, shits out of house every time he poops. Yo, dude, he was not happy when I left this morning. I bet not. He was, he ran up this morning. He's not allowed on the bed, you know? No. Yep. And, uh, but he ran up this morning when your mom let him out of his crate and she was downstairs and he knew she was downstairs and he ran upstairs and he hopped right on the bed. What'd you, know? you do? I go, dude, get down. And he was looking at me like, she's not here. I don't have to get down. And I was like, dude, get down. And he's like, no, 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 no. She's downstairs. Let's just hang out for a little while. <laughs> He's the best. Dude, man, I got to tell you, and your mom's like all the time, if you had to pick me or him, who would you pick? I'm like, don't make me choose. Let me just tell you what it is about the dog. The dog raises your, is it serotonin? Yeah, serotonin. There is such crazy, unconditional joy and love. That it's just like, oh, uh, anyways. Well, yeah, because with the dog, it's like, if you've never had a pet before, you don't understand it. Yeah. But when you get a dog for the first time, it's like your very first experience of unconditional love. How, uh, uh, jumping back, by the way, because I think we jumped out the topic. Have you ever taken a drug boodily? Boodily is wild. I'm not going to lie. Boodily? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead of anally, boodily. I'm a boodily... I'd take oh drugs boodily. Oh my God, boodily is yeah. hilarious. It'd be a great name for a song. Boodily? Boodily? Holy shit. Yeah. Um, no, I've never taken drugs boodily before. Uh, okay. I, I take my drugs the normal way. Through the mouth hole? Through the mouth hole. Yeah, dude. <laughs> the, the tra old traditional <laughs> mouth hole. That was my nickname in high school. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mouth hole. No, old traditional mouth hole. Hey, old traditional mouth hole. What'd that mouth hole do? I have to tell you, just I'm, imagine screaming that in the hallway. I'm so glad I grew up in, in my, as far as sex goes. And, and I was really started having sex like 90s on. Okay. I don't think any of that old school, like, I don't think the, the no shaving situation would have been, I'd have been happy with. But I don't think, like, you watch like the 60s porns, you're like, good God. Oh, like, those are the, those 80s Playboy magazines are the weirdest fucking things. There's like more bush than woman. It's crazy. It's like you look at it and it's like, it's like, and also you can't even focus on anything else. It's like, it's just, it's out the sides. It's out the top. It's I grew like, up in the era of bush, dude. I know. Glycerine. You know? Glycerine. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I grew up in era of bush. Bush. Bush light? 
It was, it was not, not light. light. No, no, it was no, not I, light. I, look, I grew up in in the, the forest bush. moon of Endor type yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I'll tell you how how bush light it is now. Do you know there's crabs are not a thing anymore? Ah, uh, Google it. Crabs are not a thing anymore, dude, because there's no hair down there. There's nobody who. What are they going to grab onto? Do you know what I mean? It's it's a it's a we're in a crabless society. Go ahead. Tell me right now. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. I mean, the Bra- you, everybody should thank the Brazilians uh, because there's no more crabs. Pubic lice are super common. Millions of people get infected with pubic lice every year. There are tiny insects that look like tiny versions of crabs you see at the beach. I'm gonna help, I'm gonna have to bring up the article. Um, keep talking while I while I go. I don't know how you think that crabs aren't a thing anymore. Crabs will always be a thing. I don't know if you know, but the bush is kind of making a comeback. It is? Yeah, it's kind of 50-50 right now for girl for for women. Like some women are like uh, a guy shouldn't shouldn't, you know, have a say on how I like how what I shave or what I look like. Um but then again, some guys like prefer the clean shaven and some guys don't really care. Um but who cares what the guy thinks? That's what I'm saying. So some women are I think it's more of just like a self-conscious thing. And they're just like, they want to be clean shaven. And the other half of that, that side are just like, yeah, who gives a fuck? Yeah. In 2006, doctors Nicola Armstrong and Janet Wilson, two sexual health specialists, did the Brazilian kill the pubic louse? Raised the possible link between the decreasing number of people coming to their clinics with pubic lice and increasing the number with shaved, trimmed, or waxed pubic hair. Where does this leave the woman who has so far resisted, this is hilarious, all patriarchal patriarchal, and capitalist pressures to wax her bits? Her bits is crazy. First of all, is it the patriarchy? Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Well, it's not the With pa- it being the patriarchy that not... Eat my dick. It's That's de- patriarchy. It's, it's, uh, that it's is definitely not, no. It's definitely social media. I think because it's it's, it's, a, it's that same thing. It's like where you see things on social media and you see what guys or women or guys say they like about women, and then it's like that societal pressure to want to like you know have that have that acceptance. Or women just it's a trend, and women just like it or are do, it's like and stop with the fucking patriarchal because here's the deal. You know those huge. Thick eyebrows, you're all walk rocking. That's not for us. We don't like you d- looking like you're concerned all the time. <laughs> we we don't like you looking like you have the eyebrows of a 1940s detective. Yeah, see, I'm gonna take you downtown. Eat my dick with the patriarchy, the permanent makeup. The f- you guys look. The shoe business is not the shoe business because you're buying shoes for us. We don't give a fuck what shoes you're wearing. You're yeah. wearing shoes for other women. Mm. You're you're doing the big thick eyebrows because other the ma- 100 percent right that's uh, that's okay. what Iman Iman always says she's like I'm never getting dressed up for the guys I'm no, getting dressed up for the girls dude that is not it and so your whatever your pube situation is is for what look I'm gonna tell you right now there's no doubt that women prefer dudes to be trimmed up I would guess that it, and just going I don't know, I haven't done any market research. But I bet you, and I would love to hear from you, how many of you dudes trim it up? That's been a cool... I usually do. Usually, but this is what I'm saying. It's you know a, that the woman... And, and don't... It's been a cool minute. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. And don't, guys, don't be like, well, women do more things for men than men do for women. We are, we are always thinking about how we could get some more pussy. Yeah. Okay? So don't say that. Don't be... It, it's so don't tell me this fucking art, the patriarchal fucking pressure. Fuck you. <laughs> it's just that it goes through cycles, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry I lost my shit on that. It's okay. Uh, it's so much. Everybody likes to blame somebody else for shit they're doing. Take fucking responsibility for the choices you make for whatever the fuck you wanna do. You nope. know you know what arrow was kind of funny? It was like 2000, probably mid 2000s to like mid 2010s. There was an era where there was a trend where women were shaving their pubic hair into shapes. 
So yeah, like they yeah. would get stencils and it would be like a heart or it would just be like one line true? or it'd be like a triangle or a star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a trend for a little bit where girls were like stenciling their pussy hair. It was crazy. I wonder what the most popular one was. Probably a heart. I wish I wish it was just an arm with a muscle. Right or if it was a middle, middle finger, finger or a thumbs down. Ugh. <laughs> Or just like you shaved your pubes into the shape of two people kissing, right? Like that. Oh, you know what I would do? I or would just, just like a no vacancy sign. Yeah, or a Fenway Park. That's like, a lot of effort. I don't know, but listen, dude, why not? You're thinking, of, you're thinking of very intricate things. The things I mentioned were things a four year old could draw. Yeah, but I like this where you shave the the hair to different sizes. Well, you're so you can make like depth. textures. Yeah, so you can make depth and shit. Do you know how pubic hair works? Kind of, I have it. It doesn't have that kind of texture to be able to do that. Well, dude, if it's shorter and longer, it's going to have depth to it. Right, but... I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, straighten part of it and keep one part curly and... It'd be hilarious if some dudes straighten their nut hair or straighten their pubic hair and just, like, put it, like, emo hair, like, over their oh, dick. Oh, dude, emo dick. Because tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. Dude, emo dick would be amazing. Yeah. To straighten your pubes, and you go, straighten the pubic over the top of the dick, and so it's just like what, like it would be like over the only just the right nut, a straight comb over oh. on your no, dude. not a comb over the the just like the you know how the emo kids covered one eye. Remember Trevor? Yeah, I, I would love to. I honestly, I'm gonna see if I can do that. Could must surprise your mom, and surprise is the right word. I, I, but I'm curious though because like there's a difference in like obviously like in quality between your pubic hair and your actual hair, like your regular hair. Yeah. So I don't know if your pubic hair is going to be able to withstand that heat. Well, I'm going to have to just condition it for like a month. And also, watch your nuts. Not wash. Watch. You're gonna have If you're going to have something that's 450 degrees mm, next to your yeah. dick. You know what's crazy? And that's by the way, just, yeah, my thought. I found a gray hair on my chest, right? Oh. And I'll tell you something. I've, I've, so, so far, one couple gray hairs on my chest actually now. One on the pubes. And two on the arms. Oh, dude, I, I am not looking forward to the day when I look down and there is a gray pubic hair. Can I tell you, the one on the chest and arm bothered me so much more than pubes. Oh, the pubic hair one, just shoot me. No, dude, I made my dick look like a distinguished gentleman. And no, I, it and I like, yeah, dude, it added, a little, it added a little class to my dick. A little gray hair, you're like, oh, a little salt and pepper, that a baby. It's not a little, it's a little salt and pepper if it's one hair. That's the salt and the rest is pepper. But I didn't mind the pube one. Can I tell you the chest one bothered me so much more? And the arm one was the worst. You, on your arm? Yeah, it bothered me the most because it reminded me of my PE teacher when I was in high school. <laughs> I used to see these gray fucking ar hair and I'm like, who has gray hair on their arms? That's dinosaur shit. Yeah. So the, and the one on the chest feels very old man shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to pull those. Yeah. I might end up shaving my chest if I get when I get a full Can chest. Can I pull one? No. Let me... Why? Because it'll be fun. No, for who? Me. I don't like that. Yeah, you know what else has been fun for you for a long time? Uh, you posting all my shit online. Yeah, but I haven't done that in a long time. You're welcome for the job. Yeah, that's fair. How about that? Thanks for paying for everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so listen. You sent, you sent me this one, so let's This go. came out a couple weeks ago, okay? But I, I just want to talk about it for... A few reasons. So, uh, a kilt wearing man allegedly, and if you watch the video, there's not too much to allege. It feels pretty spot on. Allegedly, anally contaminates antiques. Wait, so question contaminates. Is he just putting them up his butt and then putting them back, or is he keistering them to steal? No, no, no. Did you watch the video? No. Okay, this is going to be fun. A man in Texas has been accused of contaminating items from antique stores by placing them in his butt. Mitchell Vest was observed sticking $200 worth of merchandise in his sphincter thanks to the kilt that gave him better access to his anus. He then allegedly placed the items, which included an antique bottle opener and makeup brush, back on the shelf. He has been charged with criminal mischief and is free on a $100 bond. So I have a couple things to say about this. First of all, Feels like more than a hundred dollar penalty. I was gonna say you're gonna let that menace walk around the streets again after paying a hundred dollars. This feels like something that I don't know if it should be prison a misdemeanor. It feels fel felonious, 
prison. Wait, wait, yeah, I just well, prison feels like the spot he wants to be. So That's maybe not that. But or here, already been a hundred dollars feels like a lot for for because this is what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to say this without a doubt, a hundred percent chance. This is just the only time he's been caught. Yeah, a hundred percent. So somebody went home with like a with a bottle opener with shit on it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That feels like you owe me more than a hundred dollars for that. It feels like you should let me punch you in the face. But here's the second thing <laughs> that I really want to know. And can we click the video as the video? Here's the second thing I want to know. Why antiques? Is there something about the past that he needs in his butthole? I'm telling you, maybe he's been to prison before and he misses it. So he's putting things from the past in his butthole. But why does that, why does he need a spooky bottle opener from a pirate ship? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Why does he, why well, does he, he need King Henry's, King, King Henry V's makeup brush? But that, But that's what I'm saying is like, He's not even taking them. He's putting them back. Like he, yes. Well, he's not a thief, dude. Well, and he's, it, he's fucking worse than a thief. And like, I, I love the headphones and the, but, but, but like, you can see he's, he's trying to keep a straight face, right? Cause he can't look like he's got a bottle opener in his booty when he's just standing back there. And my next question is for the people who own this store, what do you do with the makeup brush and the bottle opener? You burn them. It seems like you wouldn't put them back on sale. No, you eat the cost. You will 100% eat the cost and you burn those. And then, yeah, no, and you burn him. I don't know. Like the, all of that is just. Why antiques? It, it, is it because they're not, they're not polished up? Is they have a couple of rough edges? Like, do they, does he, is it something about the, like the ancient spirits? Does he have. Maybe he had beef with the owner of the store. I don't think this is his first antique store. Nobody could, look. He is perfectly dressed to stick small things in his butthole. Bottle opener is not that small. I mean, if you've been practicing it, it is. I guess so. It's. I also like how his name is Mitchell Vest, and he's wearing a tank top. Yeah, it, it's very, I, very on brand for him. I, I have to say. So let me ask you a question, man. Okay, so can, he's, let's, I want, can we watch the video? Though? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's watch yeah, the video. Hit play. What's with the music? Oh, yeah. By the way, handcuff his hands behind his back. That's where he likes them. Yeah, that's where he's got the key hidden. Yeah. In his asshole. For sure. This dude has a key in his butthole for those handcuffs. Bro is bro's Houdini. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I honestly enjoy stories like this. You guys know me. I, I'm a dude who enjoys weird shit. And this one, and I'll tell you guys why I like it so much. Well, you've had your own Kilt Man experience. Yes, I've had my own. He was at the shows in Dallas this week. Where? He was in the crowd. He didn't come say what's up? Yeah, he did. When? When I was on stage. He came on stage. Where was I? I don't know. Um, Damn it. So, uh, here's... And I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Uh, you say, here's why you like this so much. Um, oh, here's why I like weird shit so much, guys. Okay. It's not, it's not just the weird shit. I am so fascinated by how you got there. Yeah. So the urine is whatever, but what did you try pre-urine? How many people did you talk to yeah. about it before you found this person? What was your childhood like? How many doctors told you no? Yeah, like, I'm dying to know the whole thing. I need yeah. to know. So this doesn't, see, it seems like this dude tr started with new things, you know, like a toothbrush. And he was yeah. like, I need some, I need something that has a little history to it. You know, maybe he's a history buff and he just, he knows where that bottle opener came from. Maybe he thinks if he puts it in his butt, he'll retain the information of the past. Do you maybe. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's capturing spirits. Yeah. Maybe he thinks he's like fucking Doctor Who or something. I don't know what that means. The, the TV show, Doctor Who? Yeah, but I've never seen one episode. No, I have not. I should have seen one episode. I've seen one episode about, um, you ever heard this? Like it was, it's like a, it's like an old mythology. It's like an old myth about these angel statues that when you make contact with them or you look at them, every time you look away, they get closer to you. And so it's essentially, it's like you have to stay locked on these stoned angels. They're like possessed or something. Yeah. But the minute you turn around, they start moving closer to you. And it's like, if they get, if they get to you, you get turned into one of these angels. It's fucking, all right. That's the only Doctor Who episode I've ever seen. Oh, wait, hold on. I have something on the same note as that. 
on that same note, the night I watched that episode, it was high school. I was with a, my group of friends like Eva and Sammy and Jesse and Charlie and Riley Trap. You know, the whole that mm-hmm. group. We were at Eva's house and we watched that episode. And Eva had did have a small angel statue in her in her yard, mm-hmm. in her front yard. And at one point, we had looked outside and seen it and the girls started freaking out. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take this out there. <clears throat> I was like, give me some tape. She was like, why? I go, give me some tape. And I put it facing the window, facing directly at us so we could always see it. And I put a little square box around it and tape. Two hours later, they remembered it. And they go, hey, will you just check to see if the angel's there? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm like, it's obviously going to be there. And I went out there and it was gone. What do you mean? The angel statue was gone. Where was the box? The box was right there. Huh. And was I, it there and angel statue? Huh? They had seen it before. It was their angel statue? It was there. It was the one they had in their garden that was yeah. always there. And the minute I put a box around it, it was gone. And so I literally, this like, I thought I was in a movie. I swear to God. Like, this is one of those moments where I peeked the curtain and it wasn't there. And I literally, like, I pushed off the door and, like, scrambled back on the hardwood floor. I was like, uh. Which somebody, one, but which one of you guys took it? Her mom. Oh. Her mom, unknowingly, was, like, she came into the, she came in, like, 20 minutes later with the angel statue. And she was like, hey, why was this in around a block of tape? And we were all just like, Bah! And we were uh, just, like, screaming. I was like, thank oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. But, like, the fact that, they, like, the girls ended up going in and, like, hiding in their rooms. Like, they took it all way too seriously. I think I was just, like, it, it was a natural reaction for me to just be like, wait. I definitely put that angel there. Yeah. But by the, by the, tape, the tape box is also still there. What? I got, it was just also, like, I didn't know what was happening. Anywho, sorry, digression. That's all right. That's a good story. I enjoy that. I enjoy the... It didn't the, seem like it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy that, like, the idea of that something is not explainable because it wasn't explainable to you guys. Zero. Zero of it was explainable. And then it was explainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like stuff like that. It was, I, I immediately looked at Travis and Riley. I go, you guys are fucking with me. He was, they were like, dude, we've been sitting next to you for the last two hours. Yeah, that's the thing. So I love that 20 minutes of freak out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To kind of figure out w- w- what... Yeah. Happened. And then for the, then a logical explanation. Yeah. It, yeah. That we used to, the guys really used to fuck with the girls in our group. We used to scare the shit out of them. That's what we're supposed to be. That's that same, that same night. I remember Trav, when he came over, he came over in a Jason Voorhees mask. Yeah. But he came over and before he came in the front door, he went to Eva's bedroom and just sat there. Or it was a screen mask. Sorry. And just sat there at the window until all the girls saw him. Commitment. Pretty funny. Love it. It was good. It was a good one. Um, all right. We only have a couple minutes left, believe it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was fast. I want to talk to you about something. Okay. I've talked to you about this before. Oh, God. You're going to hate it. What are we doing? What do you think it's going to be? It's something about my health. It is. Can we not? Like, why? why? It's my, it was my birthday two days ago. You're not going to talk to me about health. I've been on a two-day bender. The health is out the window for the last two days. Yeah, but I was going to talk to you about it before. But I want to know what I can do. I can see this is already to help you look, man. I know we're and you're 27. And you're still young, and what can I do to help you jump on the path of? You don't have to be me. I've said this a thousand times. I'm a little over the top. A little? I'm a little over the top, dude. A little more than a little. Yeah, uh, but but I I am over the top because it, that makes me feel good. Yeah. Right. Fine. And I am I, I am honestly. All about whatever I whatever I can do to make myself feel better during the day. Right. right. Here's my question. You, there, you have certain issues. Sure. Okay. Why not at least do something proactive for those issues? And I only say this because, dude, and I say this, I ask you a lot of questions because I recognize so much of myself in you. Right. And there's certain things that I harp on because I wish I had gotten ahead of it. Right. Life-wise. Yep. Being a people pleaser, Mm -hmm. which I recognize in you. Mm -hmm. Being somebody who feels like when they walk into a room, they need to bring a certain energy to help lift the room. Right. Right. That responsibility to make sure everybody's kind of happy and feels good about themselves. Right. I recognize that in you that I had as well. Um... But these certain health issues, even though I was always more health conscious than you, mm-hmm. I recognize also. And they were, they were, they made me, I can tell you what one of mine was, guys. I used to, uh, when I ate, I had to go to the bathroom. It was almost immediate. 
there was just like no in between. And, we're, and I, it was just like eat poop. And I, I was like, oh, that's healthy, man. My system goes through it. That is not healthy. That's right. not how that's just supposed to work. And the, and the poop was not healthy looking. Right. Right. Or, right. And I, and I learned since then that I was, because of how my stomach was working and my dad, I wasn't absorbing any vitamins, no right. minerals. I was generally pretty unhealthy. Uh, and my youth, mask that and maybe my natural i think i have some natural kind of on the high end energy yeah yeah agreed and so that masks some of that too so but when i look back at how debilitating there were times where i didn't eat before shows or i would go to dinner with friends and pretend to eat because i didn't want to eat and then like at the end of dinner while everyone's at dinner have to run off an unavoidable shit for 10 minutes. Right. Right. So that kind of stuff that when I look back on, and I reckon, like I said, I recognize a lot of myself and you, and there's so if there's some things that I harp on more, which I can see from your face, there are, uh, this is why. So let me ask you one last time. Why, why, not, like I said, not go over the top, but why not? Because can I tell you what it feels like to me? Well, can, can you ask the question first? And then? Yes. Why not do these few simple things that will make your life better? Well, I've started doing little things. I've just started, I've started drinking a ton more water. I've, mm -hmm. We've stopped eating out a lot. So we've just stopped eating at the usual places that are not good for us, you know? So starting little things, we're working out on the weekends. And so I'll, I would say I am doing a couple little things that are good for my health. Okay. I would say my, actually my stomach has felt better over the last two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Good. Um, so I think I am slowly starting to do it. Mainly also because one, well not mainly, but one, it, it's good for me and I definitely need it. Before I turn 30, I want to get my shit together. Yeah. And also too, I would really like to stop hearing you nag me about it. That's for sure. So I'm doing little things to, to, I, to get on track so that when you see, when you see uh, an upgrade in something, you're going to be like, He's listening to it, and you're going to stop bringing it up. I, I, I by the way, I'm, I'm kidding. I, I you, no, listen, I totally understand, and I, it, I, it does feel nagging, and without a doubt, I, and I, this is one of the few things that I don't feel bad about nagging you about, because I know how much better your quality of life will be. I understand that. That's it. I'm just talking I'm just talking about your quality of life. And the more I learn about the human body, even though it's still functioning like a fucking well-oiled machine at 30, especially for dudes. That's kind of that's like optimum you in between like your testosterone's dying down maybe just a little bit, you're a little wiser, but you, your body still works like a fucking machine, you know? Um but like I also have learned that that's disease and shit like that start in your body way earlier right. than when they show itself. And so I'm, I, I just would love for you to just get out in front of a couple things. So I am, I just want you to know I am implementing two more rules on the road. They're simple. They're simple. We'll see about that. I'll listen. We'll do it this weekend. Well, well you're going to tell me the rules. We're not, well, I'm not going into the rules blindly. Are you fucking dumb? No way. What are the rules? Do you want me to tell you right now? Right now. Okay. In the morning time. Oh, get up and get sunshine with you? No, you don't Thank have to do God. that. You don't have to do that. You don't let, have to do that. Let me sleep. I mean, let, you should get up and do, get sunshine with me. Yeah. You know what else is good for the body? Sleep. Sleep. I agree with you hundred percent. So, and I don't know which one is more important. I think sleep is. Sleep. Yep. Definitely. But I fall asleep before you. Yes. And I'm, yeah, I'm usually up for like two or three yeah. hours after you. So that's why I don't wake you up before I leave. I don't, I don't bother you with that. No, no, but I usually get up around 10, something like that. Here's thing number one. You're going to do two things. First, you're going to take some L-glutamine for your stomach. That's fine. Okay. I'm good with that. When you wake up in the morning, you are going to drink on an empty stomach, this stuff called colostrum. Okay. Okay. And let's just, let's experiment with it. And see those if rules, it those rules aren't that bad. No, and see if it helps your digestion okay. and your immune system. I'm done. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Really? Yeah. That was so easy. That, 
that wasn't a pain in the ass. Are you taking? <laughs> <laughs> are you? And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out to you. Is there anything because you can do this that you would like? Because I definitely say to you, I'd like to see you try to. I want to see you eat more. God eat damn more. it. Your doctor said you need to eat more carbs. And at every meal during a day, the one day a week, you eat extra carbs. You need to be eating carbs with one meal at least a day. And I'm not saying a little piece of gluten-free toast, take a couple bites out of it. No. Nah. Like, you need to be eating more carbs. Rice, something. Okay. Like, because okay. you even said it. You think, you're like, I'm not, I'm not eating enough. I'm like, great. And then every time you go to eat something, you order the same exact thing. That's not enough for your body. Yeah. So I, you need to, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with Dr. Scott on it. You need to eat some more carbs. Yeah, I'm not. Potatoes, rice, sweet potato. Yeah. If we do that thing where we grab a sweet potato and we bring it to the club and they cook it for us, fine. We used to do that every weekend. Yeah. I'm good with that. You need to eat more. Yeah, I'm not, especially for how hard I'm working out. You've also been pretty grumpy recently. Really? A couple of days. Can I tell you something that I decided this morning? Um, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. And I and I'm pretty good with with I'm um, with people. I, I want to be completely honest with people though. Like, look, I'm not perfect, as you all know. I've gone off on customer service people. I've I've said shit to people that I regret. Like, yep. I'm a human being. And you know, people comment on our relationship and 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 uh, my relationship with your mom and with Kate and Trevor mm -hmm. and how how great it is and it is. But I would tell you something else, guys. I've made plenty of mistakes. We all as, have. As a father, as a husband, as a person, I've I've made plenty of mistakes, and all I can try to do is be better. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that I I I I think I do need. Here's my flaw right now. My ego, right? Mm -hmm. And I do feel good. I just don't know if long-term it's sustainable. Right. But my ego right now loves the way I look. Okay. And so... You can still look that way and eat more. And so I have a tiny little bit, if I'm being completely honest with you, and I've always had a tiny little bit of body dysmorphia. You definitely have. Right? And so I've always seen, like, I've always hyper-focused on something right. that other people would be like, what's the fucking problem? Yeah. So it's something that I definitely fight. And the body dysmorphia affects my appetite. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so Perfect. these are, I, I, I accept all these. And I will make a concerted effort one meal a day. At least. No, just one meal a day. Let me start with one meal just to see how my body reacts to it and how I feel. I think it should be lunch or dinner. It definitely not breakfast. No. I don't feel good with carbs in the morning at That's all. That's fine. Yeah, I think, I think lunch or dinner. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not a huge lunch dude. Here's another thing. I'm, I'm pretty much down to two meals a day, if you've noticed. I do that breakfast, and I either eat a late lunch, and I order dinner at the club, and I don't eat it. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Or I, or I eat, just eat that early dinner. Yeah. So I really want to make a concerted effort to sneak another meal in there. Yeah, it, does, it also doesn't have to be like a full-blown meal. Yep, yep. It just be like a little protein, protein replenish, you know? But I'm definitely, I think the, the carbs at dinner, I think, is the way to go. Yeah. Okay. Especially with the amount that we're performing and all that shit. Yep. Okay, oh. deal. Yeah. Bet. So I'll go carb, more meal. You will try this stomach stuff for me. Great. Yeah? Shake on it. Good, perfect. I love you. Love you too. Um, with that being said, that's it. Oh, yeah. We're out of here. We're out of here. Ah, you know what I'm doing right now? Speaking of health, going to Whataburger. That's not healthy. That was the joke. Oh. Dude, there's been a Whataburger here since Super Bowl, and I haven't gone. That's, uh, that, you should be proud of that. I, no, that's like saying I could get heroin down at the Palms, but I haven't done it yet. You should be proud of me. That is not the Whataburger is not heroin. It's not not? Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, man. I'm go it's, my it's my last day in town before the birthday bender is over. I'm doing... I'm doing... What, what, are, you a, what are you, a teenage girl? You got a five-day birthday? Iman has set up 
my lovely girlfriend set up the whole week of plans. I had my one of my best friends surprise me last night. That was amazing. It was uh, my oh, buddy Evan showed we, up. What do we do to talk him into moving out here? No, don't worry. I'm working on it. Okay. Don't you worry. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, I got I got one more day on this bender, and then I'll back all my shit. I mean, I'm already on my shit, but okay. you know what I mean. Well, listen, Nashville, you get w one cheat meal. You making it a hot chicken? No, oh, fuck no. I don't know. I have to figure it out. Oh, dude, there's this place called Ur I think it's called Urban. Food. Isn't there a great Thai place right there? Isn't there an insane? Remember, you there's a Thai place that used to be right by your house. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't that Thai like the tiny elephant or something like the that? The pink elephant, the dancing elephant. It's something elephant, the little elephant. I think it's tiny or little. I don't but, think. Yeah, I think it's dig it down elephant. But that that I might I might hit up some like some noodles. Or Yo, dude, there's a curry there, for that. There's also a um, vintage store across the street from Zany's that has the fucking best old tuxedo pants. Right. Light blue old awesome. tuxedo pants. I'm going in there and going fucking ham. Yeah, we'll figure out what the cheat meal is going to be this weekend. But it, either it's going to be that Thai food. Well, actually, I could do a non cheat meal with Thai food. I could do a curry with rice. And that's coconut milk and or coconut cream and 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 rice. So that's actually not a cheat meal. Mm, okay, but we should go get Thai food. Okay, we will. Mm. Um, All right. Um, uh, I just want to just say out loud how grateful I am for all of you. Um. I have been doing this a long time. I've never had more fun. I have, I made a huge realization maybe last week, the week before, and they're coming more and more often um, because I'm allowing myself just to listen to what the universe or the world right. is showing me. Mm -hmm. And a huge realization is stop pining for or yearning or wondering why these certain people aren't in your life mm. and start paying attention to the people and the things that are. Yep. Because that's what's supposed to be there. And that's what's important. That's what's supposed to be there. Now, that's not saying you, you can't manifest and dream, but if you're in something, right, and you're like, man, I wish these people, these people, these people, and there are these other people that are in your day-to-day, -day, every day that life is put there, don't ignore those people. Those people are there for a reason. Yeah. And so that is a huge realization for me and feels pretty fucking good. All right. All right. Good one. Yeah. Um, I would also like to say thank you guys for all the birthday wishes, the birthday love. Um, day before, day of, day after, I, I felt it. I saw all the comments, the DMs. Thank you guys. It does mean a lot. One more trip around the sun. Um, and now, you know, I'm not going to make the 27 Club joke, but, you know. I like your hoodie. Thanks. Yep. That's a good one. Um, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Uh, we're in a city near you up until June. So come see us. Come have some fun. Nashville, I'm excited to get weird with you guys this weekend. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Thank you guys again so, so much for being here. The oldies, the newbies. Yes. And I'll just say, uh, I want to thank Best Day Brewing once again for allowing me to drink beer. <laughs> I'm not a, uh, I don't drink booze anymore. And yes, this beer does not have alcohol in it, but it, I don't think of it as a non-alcoholic beer yeah. because it tastes so good. It just tastes like beer, man. And so I want to, um, it's been really cool to be able to sit out on my deck, dude, mm. and smoke a joint and that was it. Yeah. Huh? Matt? <laughs> Thank you. And crack a beer. Don't, and, don't uh, boost his ego, man. And we, you and I will be cracking one in the green room in Nashville. in Nashville. But I would tell all you guys, if you are not there for the alcohol, but you are there for a nice cold beer, best, dra best day brewing is the fucking Bomsky, Domsky, Bromsky. What he said. And on that note, do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. And on a controversial hot take, it's where we're going to end it. I'm going to take my headphones right after this. Whataburger over in and out. Whoa, you're fired. <laughs>